to. What do you think the next 10 years is going to hold? What do you think is going to be the next innovation in alternative data? So I, I think from the vendor space, the, the uh, word that I keep hearing is consolidation. I, I actually think that might be the wrong word to use. Um, I think of the alternative data pipeline from raw data to decision making as, as uh, 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 it's a process. It's almost, uh, it's, it's almost an assembly line, if you will. And um, the raw data collection, uh, particularly in the alternative data space, we've largely relied on third-party partnerships for that. And that's because some of that uh, alternative data uh, requires specialized tools and specialized knowledge um, to, to, to actually get that into database. Uh, but then what we do really well is the, down, is, is the next step in the process, downstream process, which is to take the content and to standardize the presentation and the delivery and to develop the capabilities to extract the information. And I think as, as the standardization becomes more common, the time for clients to, to and, and end users to trial the data and determine if it enriches their workflow will be shorter. I think as the capabilities get better, the uh, features we extract will get less noisy and um, I think that as the breadth and depth of the content continues to grow, we will see wider adoption. What, um, where's that standardization going to be driven from, do you think? Is that the market pull or people like yourselves getting I think it is. I think it is market pulled. So uh, we, we have uh, third party partnerships that we do not white label. They are, uh, you can pull them from our marketplace website and you will see a third party name there, and you can go to that third party name and get that data, but it's not going to have our identifiers. It's not going to have uh, delivery through our channels. And so it's going to be uh, far more difficult to marry that content with other information that exists in our ecosystem today. And by standardizing the, uh, the, the presentation and the delivery, uh, clients can very quickly impound it into their workflows and see if they uh, observe an improved outcome. Okay. Tony, how, what do you think is, does, a, does that sound like a, a place you want to go to? Or? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think about the innovations going forward. I think there's, you know, across different dimensions, there's going to be innovations. Um, certainly, you know, the, the types of uh, data that you can access, again, um, it's getting more broad. I feel like the last couple of years we've seen um, game-changing type data become available in the life sciences space. Um, and I do think that um, more sort of B2B type uh, industries like enterprise software are still undercovered uh, by uh, you know, non-traditional data sets, but I think we're getting close. So I think, you know, we're going to continue to expand across different industries, across different geographies, and that's exciting. And then, you know, the technologies that we use to understand the data, um, things like entity resolution, um, and, you know, trying to better understand non-intuitive nuance interactions, you know, between what different data sets are saying um, are, 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 you know, problems that lend themselves in a, you know, pretty profound way to machine learn type solutions. So I do think, you know, we'll continue to see that. And, uh, and then there'll be other technological innovations, maybe quantum computing, right, that, that, that will, will change the game. Thanks very much. Uh, Mike, what are your thoughts in your crystal ball? Sorry. Yeah, a few things. So, um, so I think one thing is that, you know, if you think about the current data vendor, right, what's their business model? They, they basically call everybody they, on their Rolodex, right, and sell it. I mean, maybe, you know, to, to Sigma, they, don't, they offer some super special stuff, but for, for me, at least, they, they, you know, I'm probably the 20th or 50th person getting the call, right? And, and you know, and obviously you can use data in a non-intuitive way, but a lot of data does actually have a pretty straightforward application once you get it. Right. So, so then we know that economic 101 is too much money chasing after the same idea. You know, you're not going to get any return. 
So how do you solve this problem? Well, you know, you, you think of a unique data set that's not been commercialized and you try to collect yourself. But if you're a company like Rubico, who's been around for 90 years and wants to be around for another 90 years, you know, not just regulatory risk, there's actually reputational risk as well, right? We live in, we live in uh, I mean, we're headquartered in, in Europe, so there's GDPR and all that stuff. So, you know, your reputation is one of your most prized asset. So, you know, I, I think what we came across recently, you know, I, I don't think this is new, but there are firms out there that actually collects data for you, that outsources stuff, right? So you kind of can have a little of an arm's length relationship, right? So, I, and then, you know, they, they, you ask them to collect it and then the agreement is that they only sell it to you or they basically access your proxy. So I think this would be a sort of a data collection as a service. I think that's one interesting development. Um, and second thing, not, not so much for us, but maybe for more um, fundamental investors. A lot of fundamental investors get these data. They don't know what to do with it. They don't really know how to do it. So, you know, increasingly, I think data and algorithm, right, you know, how do you analyze data is being packaged together as a, as a, you know, as a, as a package solution. So I think that could be an interesting, um, you know, we're already seeing some vendors slash technology provider doing that. I think that's going to become more and more commonplace. Uh, sure. So uh, I don't want to repeat what um, these guys have already said, so I I'm just going to rip through my list really fast. Uh, super obvious, there's going to be more data sets coming online over the next several years that we have no idea are coming. Why? Because what's causing alternative data to explode? It's the sensorization of the world, uh, it is the growth of e-commerce, uh, and it is the growth in computing power both for storage and analytics. Very obviously, more data sets are coming online soon. Um, there's going to be breakout into verticals beyond consumer. That's already happening to some extent. That's going to continue across potentially uh, the rest of um, the investable universe, uh, as well as geographic. We're seeing interesting things happening in Asia and uh, in Europe. They're behind in, in maturity, but that's coming. Uh, emphasis on building ensembles based on multiple independent data sets. Uh, obviously, people that are sort of ahead of the curve are already doing this. Eventually, everyone's going to need to catch up. Uh, also, emphasis on projecting the future rather than just now casting, because now casting has only so much potential uh, alpha and benefit to it. Uh, and uh, finally, the you know, last major theme I, I think that's already ongoing is the emergence and uh, ongoing consolidation of data supermarkets because there is so much power in blending across different data sets together. In some sense, it's more efficient for that to be done uh, sometimes at a data vendor level rather than each uh, buy side company reinventing the wheel and you know building a big data team. Those are sort of the five things I would say are uh, the major themes for alternative data in, in, in the near future.